Hello and welcome to another episode of DVTV, bringing the next wave of digital video. I'm your host, Tony Reale. Today we're gonna to talk about color meters. Now you may be familiar with a light meter. I've um, got one right here. This is the Seikonic 758 Cinna. Um, so this is um, more optimized. So there's photography light meters and then there's film light meters. This is more optimized for film productions. Has um, things that are specific to uh, film cameras that you might be familiar with. These are awesome for measuring light, for um, being able to uh, you know, write a record. So let's say I'm, I've got my key, my fill, backlight. I can actually measure what the light is and then be able to recreate that in another location. I can also know when I'm walking to a scenario, like um, if, you know, I don't have my camera with me, I can measure what the ambient light is of the room um, and find out how, you know, if, if there's enough ambient light of, of the scene to be able to uh, expose my camera the way I want. So light meters are super duper duper handy uh, for that. But these are for measuring light. Now a color meter is for measuring the color of light. Um, so this is all about exposure value, uh, luminosity. This is all about the color value of the light. So this is a completely different tool, um, and these really can't work. In, um, uh, they can't do what each other does. You know, this won't measure color, and this kind of does um, measure lux, but not in the detail that this does. So the color meter. This is the Upper Tech. Um, and uh, I, I really love this one because of a new firmware update that they just released, which changes the game completely on what this can do. We'll get to that shortly. But what does a color meter do? Well, I'm going to power it on and kind of go over it basically. Uh, like I said, it measures the color of a light. So uh, with its sensor, it's going to, this little white sensor here, this is the cover that protects it. It's going to measure what the color value of the light is. So that Kelvin degree range that you would set the white balance on your camera to, this measures whatever light you pointed at, what the Kelvin value is. So why is this important? Well, there's a lot of things that go into it. And we're going to show you a couple different scenarios that you might run into that'll make this, having one of these, super, super handy. All right, so we're outdoors right now, a uh, blustery windy winter day in here in Wisconsin. Um, and it's, as you can see, it's a cloudy overcast day. Now, if you're used to shooting outside or if you work with uh, daylight temperature bulbs, they're usually calibrated to 5,600 degrees Kelvin. So on my uh, FS5 here, I'm just gonna shoot Jimmy. We're currently calibrated to 5,600 degrees Kelvin. Um, and that's what I have my white balance set at. So that's where I'm locked in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop that recording. And now I'm going to use my color meter and actually measure what this is because daylight can actually range significantly in the Kelvin ranges um, and it's hard to know exactly what it could be and a cloudy day it could actually be a lot bluer. So if I push my capture button here and measure, I'm getting 6300 degrees Kelvin. So that's significantly a different range than what I was at before. So if I turn my, my white balance down to 6300 and now I'm shooting Jimmy again, the comparison uh, is gonna be more accurate to what the actual color temperature of the, of the uh, sky is. It may not be a huge difference, but where this comes in hugely handy is when you're shooting out outdoors throughout the day and you do one setup earlier in the morning, one setup at noontime, and all of a sudden some clouds come in and you're doing another setup, and you want all of those to be correctly white balanced, so it's a lot easier for you to match it in post. That's where something like this is incredibly handy because you can accurately color match instead of going into post and then spending a ton more time trying to get those that footage to be more accurate, especially if you're working with a camera like the FS100 or, or a higher compressed codec where you don't have as much flexibility, getting it right in camera is a lot, lot easier. Okay, another example, again, for measuring color uh, temperature of a light would be something like a fluorescent light. Now, fluorescent lights can range to any temperature. Usually they fall in the uh, 4,300 degree Kelvin range, but you know, you can't just walk into a room and, and know exactly what they are. So if I take this and I calibrate it, that's showing me 4,000 degrees Kelvin. So if I just assumed 4,300, I wouldn't be completely accurate. I would be noticing that I would want to get it at 4,000 degrees Kelvin. That would be a much closer uh, and more accurate thing. So I can walk into any environment and quickly know what the right white temperature is. And if you're moving around and you're going to a different room, you could have different color temperature bulb. So now we go into this room here. This is our, our studio area. And if I come up here and measure the bulbs, they're at 4,100 degree Kelvin. So I know what these all are very, very quickly. Something that, you know, even the auto white balance of your camera can't be as accurate with. 
So that's another thing, having consistency across your shots. So you're doing um, a manufacturing facility and you're going into an office and then you're going into their, their manufacturing floor, kind of like what we just did. You could easily encounter completely different color temperatures and then you go to post, you don't maybe notice as much in your camera, but you go to post and now you've got all these different t temperatures. You're spending a ton of time just trying to get two scenes to match with each other. And if you want a consistency, you know, white balance is one of the first things to start with. All right, so here we have um, kind of just a generic light panel system. Um, this is, you know, one of those ones that you can get inexpensively off of eBay. Um, typically, they are known for having kind of a green cast issue. So if we take this gel or this light, and you know, I can dial between daylight and tungsten. I'll turn it as far down as I can for the camera. So we've got daylight or tungsten, and we have daylight. But I don't know exactly how close to, to tungsten this is. A technique that I've used in the past before I had this color meter was to basically go into our white psych wall, point the light at the, the wall, set my camera at 3200 degrees Kelvin or whatever the temperature of the light's supposed to be, and then shoot an image, go into Photoshop, jack up the saturation and then see what color is now dominating the frame. If it's green, if it's magenta, what is the color that's, that's going there? And uh, then start using gels to eliminate that as much as possible. Again, that isn't the best solution. And if you're on location, you don't know what light you're working with or you can't reach a light like we're up here, now you're, you don't know what to do. You know, it's, it's almost impossible then to figure out how to uh, get a light to more accurate. So we take this light and we, we measure it. It comes up at 3,000 degrees Kelvin. So I know it's a, it's a bit warmer than a 3,200 degree Kelvin light. Uh, and I could then take this light and, uh, and just put, you know, put some CTB on it, try to get it like an eighth CTB or something like that um, to try to get that more accurate. Um, or I could try dialing in some daylight, see if that helps with the solution. But there's another feature on this, uh, this meter that they just added with a new firmware update that really changes how you can approach um, correcting any sort of light. And if you go into the home, and we'll show you a close up of this, if we go to filter, and then you'll notice a new thing. So it shows you the current Kelvin, um, and you'll show you the target. So say I want, I want this light to match 3200 degrees Kelvin. That's my target. I hit it, I push the button, and now it shows me what gels I need in order to accomplish that. So it isn't just a matter of uh, daylight or tungsten. You know, that's your range of Kelvin, you know, from the, the low 2000s all the way up to your 6,000, 7,000. The range of Kelvin that your camera measures is basically that orange, yellow to blue indigo. That's kind of the range. Green, you know, if you look at a rainbow, green would be in the middle. But the way that cameras measure that and the way lights kind of leak this green is actually it's a sliding scale back and forth. You can see it um, shown in this little chart here. You've got red to blue and then green to magenta. And what you want to do is, you, you know, you, you can have that, you can get the light closer to yellow or orange, whichever direction you're going to between yellow, orange and blue. But if you've got green spike in it, it's almost impossible to gel that into with just using CTB and CTO. So what you want is minus or plus green. Plus green obviously would be a green gel. Minus green would be a magenta gel because that's the other side of the spectrum. And you use those lights to correct for any green that you might have. So when you look in here, it actually shows a number. That number corresponds to a gel in the Roscoe chart. So all you have to do is find out what gel that is. And, and uh, I have an app that I use for it. Uh, it's called Swatches. And if you pull up the app, you can actually go in and just enter in the name of the gel. So I'm gonna hit search, and the first one it's telling me is a 218. So 218 is an eighth CT, CTB. So that means I would need an eighth um, color temperature blue or an eighth daylight gel. So as I calculated before, an eighth CTB might be accurate. Well, this is telling me that is accurate but that's along the yellow and blue spectrum. What I also need is possibly some plus or minus green. So the other gel next to it is a 248. So I check that, that comes in at a half minus green, which again is a magenta gel. So if I combine CTB, uh, an eighth CTB and a half minus green onto this, this light the way it is right now, that will be 3200 degrees Kelvin. It'll match then with your RE light like this. So this is an RE 3200 degree light 
If I add those two gels on here, these two lights will match. That's awesome. That, you know, that takes the guesswork out, and when you get into color grading, life becomes a lot, lot simpler. Because when you're dealing with uh, that, that green magenta shift, where things can become really complicated is if I have these two lights in a scene. I'm color balanced to 3200, this light's keying, everything's great, and I said, hey, let's use this as a backlight. All right, so you get into post and you discover, hey, um, the hair is just a little green, so let's go ahead and pull that green out. Well, now this light's gonna go magenta because you pulled the green out, now you're putting, you know, it's shifting to that magenta region. And you end up spending way too much time, and it's almost impossible to completely get rid of the green and not have it shift to magenta or vice versa. So when you can get rid of that green in camera right away, that saves, the, you know, saves your life so much. Now, if I were to take this uh, calibrator, point at the ceiling, and I'm gonna see that we're going to get Again, um, target is 3200 degrees Kelvin. Um, these lights are measuring at 4100 degrees Kelvin, so it tells me what gel I would need uh, both directions to put onto this light to make it 3200. Well, that's great, but I can't reach that light. Um, and it would cost a fortune to try and get all these gels to, uh, to put it up there, and then the gels would be visible in the scene. So what do I do? Well, you can actually just go backwards then with your key. So as I said before, you know, you want to get, you want to match your lights in camera as best as possible. So when you pull out the green, you're, you're pulling all of it out. And, it, and so if you add green to your, your key and you match the, your overhead lights, then when you pull the green out, this isn't going to shift to magenta because it's already matching. So again, if you just look at this and it tells me I need a CTB on here and I need a, a, a minus green or plus green, whatever it may be on here, you just do the opposite. So say it needs an eighth minus green and it needs an eighth CTB. Let's just say that for the sake of an example. What you do is you put an eighth CTO on here and an eighth plus green on here. So you just go the opposite and that by, that, by doing that, this light, which is 3200 degrees Kelvin, will match that light. Again, you enter the numbers on here, it tells you exactly what you want. Uh, and you can use something like this Roscoe Color Correction Kit. These are awesome uh, because it has all the types of gels that you might possibly need. We've got in here a full blue, a half blue, a third blue, fourth blue, eighth blue. So those are your CTBs. Then you've got CTOs. Then you've got plus and minus green as well. So this little kit actually has all the things that you might need for color correcting on a, on a light like the, uh, the Ari over there. Now if you need something bigger than that, they make bigger kits. Um, you can buy full rolls of this, but if you were to get every single light uh, gel on here, it would cost you hundreds of dollars to get full rolls of that size. So you can get these little kits, put on a one by one, put on your, your Ari light. These are really, really handy, and you just keep a couple of these kits in, in your kit, and you'll be able to then match your lights to this. So that's where something like this comes in handy. And that feature of the gel, that gel lookup, I've never seen on any other um, color meter before. It is a new firmware that just released a couple months ago, and it completely changes the game in being able to use this. Because not only is it telling you information, like you know how, what's the, the C, um, the CRI of a light, you know, color rendition index, but it's also telling you what gels you need and keeps things really, really quick. So that's the Upper Tech. Uh, this is the uh, MK350N Plus. So uh, I love it. I highly recommend it. This changes the way that you approach the lighting. It gets you more accurate. It makes your color grading a lot simpler. The, a color meter is expensive. I'm not gonna lie. It is an investment. But when you see all the things that you can do with it, you can get cheap LED lights and make it more accurate just by using a gel kit like this. You can match fluorescence. Because you think about it, if you had to relamp this or if you had to gel all these lights, it would cost a fortune. But instead, you now match your key light directly to your overheads, saves you a ton of time and money. So as, for much, as much as the investment is, it is a great addition to the kit and I highly recommend it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.